Harry, you set a few records last season on the way to the title, and you could set another one on Saturday if you uh, really? if you don't concede for f- 50 minutes. It's a new Football League Club record. So that, does that Football interest League you? Club? For, for, for Cheltenham, yeah. Oh, for Cheltenham. Longest shutout. Is it? Yeah. Well, that's good then. Well, we might park the bus over 50 minutes. <laughs> we'll park the bus and then get at them after 50 minutes. So it's always nice to, to get do something that nobody else has, has done. And, uh, yeah, I'll be, you know, having a look at me watch in coming up to half time and just after half time so uh, yeah, it gives the lads something to think about while they're out there yeah if, you, if somebody had told you at Stevenage you'd go on a run like that without conceding you know would you have believed them at that time <laughs> well um you'd say thank you and thanks for your, your you know your, your hope in us and that's what you have always as a manager you you know that they've got it in them you know they've got it in them and then it's just a matter of whether it comes out and how often it comes out. Um, our new players and our previous players have got into a little, uh, you know, they everyone knows each other now. You know, they're like old players now because the, the, the system's been around. We've played a couple of systems, but the new players have definitely integrated now into our philosophy and our way of doing things. So that's pleased the lads that were here before. So it creates a better camaraderie and a and a good group that are, that understand football and understand each other. That's that's the main thing. Yeah, just to check, Gary, when you when you were sent off last week, you were allowed to go in the change room at half time, aren't you? And yeah. you're just not allowed to go in the technical area. Yeah. So you, you were allowed in there before the game on Saturday. Yeah, I'm never in the technical area anyway. I'm always just outside <laughs> it. <laughs> so the fourth officials keep telling me, but they're gonna have to put me on a bungee or something like that, and I've. I've even crossed a couple recently, so in the end, anyway. But um, no, the people behind me sometimes remind me that uh, I'm creeping too far outside the technical area. And uh, if I turn around and smile at the fourth official, he knows I'm. It's only because of my keenness. I don't know if you saw the other night when West Ham played Chelsea, and uh, both managers were never in their technical area and were right on the touchline. And I'm thinking, why don't we get in a full official like that? You know, like that uh, lets you, lets you be yourself. But uh, I understand the technical area, and I've got to stay in it. Did that answer your question? Yeah. And so, <laughs> what about communication then? Because normally Steve Book has an earpiece on, doesn't he? And he speaks to Tim. Yeah. So you can have a mobile phone up with you and uh, be no, in contact. On. No, Steve Book has the earpiece for Gavin. Really, that's right. more right. for the injuries. Um, so we're going to have to have signs from Gavin to Bookie without the earpiece, because I'll probably have the earpiece myself and uh, um, hopefully I can home in and tune in to what the referees and sport officials and linesmen and uh, assessors are saying to each other, and I'll be writing them all down like they do. I know you watched all the games anyway, but did it give you a different perspective last week, watching it from the director's box? I, I've, I've tried it before, it does give you a different perspective, but you, you unfortunately, your concentration's taken away a little bit because when people know you're there, there there'll always be a comment or comments, um, especially well whether you're winning or losing. People always like to make a comment sort of thing, and it's okay, you understand that. But it, it is a bit, little bit distracting. So if I could wear blinkers as well and and, boat and cover that ear, and then, <coughs> that, then I'd probably be all right. But I like to be in the action, to be honest, and uh, I find it difficult. So I'm pleased it's only one, one game because maybe they, you know, there's, they had options of more games. So what's less than one game? They can't ban you for half a game, can they? You know what I mean? So I didn't feel I did a lot wrong, but hey ho. Yeah, just finally, Gary, Carl Storer, he must be distraught because um, this one is probably the most unlucky of his three. You know, some of the some of it's been self-inflicted, but this one is a bit of genuine bad luck, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think he's a competitive player, and uh, if uh, if the situation arises like it did, it was right in front of you know their, their dugout and their players reacted, the player on the floor reacted. You know, it's a difficult situation for referees to to be in, and he he didn't want to make he didn't know his decision at first because. You get a red card out straight away when that happens to stop any shenanigans. That was why I was asking the linesman to help him. But um, he's uh, yeah, he's unlucky, and I'm sure he cried his eyes out on Sunday night because he's a 
footballer that likes playing football. And so it's, uh, it's difficult for him. But four games, a couple of weeks, you know, three Saturdays, and uh, he's, he'll be back in competition for his place again. But, yeah, for him, it'll be uh, a gutter. Cheers, Greg. No problem. Um, you had four clean sheets in a row. Have you changed you. anything on the training field or not? Um, not really, no. I think it's just the only things you change is that you work very hard with the defenders and you make sure they're in the right areas at the right time. You make sure that you don't allow the opposition to have lots of crosses and shots and you know which create goals. Mm -hmm. You've got to get to the ball first in your own penalty area like you have in the other one. I just think it's players that have worked with us for a little bit longer now. And when they first come, it's all new, and some of them hadn't played three at the back, and some did, and some did. You know, they certainly haven't played with each other. So it's like a, the experience of a couple of months together that's um, culminated into no goals, I think. How good has the combination been with obviously Liam Davis, Andreasi, uh, Downs, and Plavatic? Has it worked? Do you think that they get along to us and they have a good, they reach all areas in defence? Yeah, I think so. I think we, we, we've got a players that have different abilities and strengths and uh, that seems to have come out at the moment but we've still got a bit to do so we're still working on them, still need little fine tuning, I mean Tins was ill last week so he couldn't, he couldn't play or travel and uh, he's fit this week so you know we have to decide whether he comes back or whether you, know, you keep the same player that was in O'Shaughnessy or whether you change something, you know, so it's, there's a lot of decisions every week to be made, but you're, you're really trying to keep that continuity because we're only 50 minutes away from breaking a record. <laughs> <laughs> and um, finally, a few weeks ago, you spoke about the need to um, put a run together of results and you've almost done that now. Is, yeah. is it how far are you off all but confirming your safety as a football league club? Yeah, we, well, we've got, we, we got two or three more wins to go yet before you confirm it. Well, probably more than that before you confirm it, because it won't be confirmed to yeah. a couple of weeks before the end of the season, hopefully sooner. But uh, at least we're going into games knowing that our squad looks strong mm -hmm. um, and that we're, uh, we're competing now with every team that we come up against. And uh, to beat Carlisle at home, you know, is a good result. Mansfield were at top of the form table when we played them. To keep them down to, you know, nil-nil, um, with only ten men and your manager in the stand um, is uh, is not an easy one. So the boys have done great there. So it's um, no, I think the chairman had an interview yesterday and he said he's looking forward to every game and I'm the same at the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem.